Hello, my name is Tom Hayes. I'm Director of Customer and Community Relations for New Jersey Natural Gas and your host for Community Connections. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, today. Uh, we have a very special guest with us. Uh, Luisa Sala is also from New Jersey Natural Gas and is our uh, Energy Assistance Program Specialist. So, welcome. It's Thank great you, to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Pleasure. So, I know what you do with the gas company, but maybe you can tell our, our viewers uh, what is the type of work that you do at New Jersey Natural Gas? Well, at New Jersey Natural Gas, as an energy assistant specialist, I have the opportunity to work with an amazing group of people, not mm -hmm. only with New Jersey Natural Gas, but community leaders and different organizations to help our customers get the information when they need energy assistance, where to go, what to do, how to go about it. We have um, different programs that you know, I want to discuss with you today. Mm -hmm. And we will help every of our customers in all our service territory to get the assistance that they need. Wow, that's great. You happen to be bilingual also, don't you? Yes, which yes. Is, which is I am a great bilingual in Spanish. Company. As many of our customer service rep at New Jersey Natural Gas as well. We have multilingual uh, customer service at New Jersey Natural Gas. So when our customers call, if they are not comfortable with one language, we always can find somebody that will be helping them right. in any other language they'll be comfortable with. Which is terrific. So maybe you can tell our viewers, what can they do now that we're rolling into like these heating seasons and all that? What do they can do to uh, catch up on their heating bills? Yes, we do realize that <clears throat> customers can have sometimes uh, higher balances than what they can afford. So we want to ensure them to contact us as soon as they have any type of financial hardship. Mm -hmm. We can help them, we can guide them, and we can tell them what different programs they can go about. We have also a payment arrangement that they can go to, to customers that qualify for it. Mm -hmm. We also have programs that they can apply with uh, different documentation that they will need. Throughout our service territory, Mammoth and Ocean County, we have different locations where they can go. And apply for services. That's great. It is. It's very helpful because we know, you know, not everybody's right in the middle of a particular town, so they need to go to other parts of the counties. And sometimes it's not easy to get transportation across counties. So the fact that we have locations throughout the counties, I think, has always been very helpful. Yes, it is. They can also, when they contact us, we give it the information. They can do it over the mail. You know, many mm -hmm. uh, customers have, don't have the opportunity because they have work or different activities, you know, throughout the day. So they can do perfectly do it over the mail. They will contact us and we'll give you all the information about their location closest to them. Mm -hmm. So they can uh, get that information directly from the um, organization that will help them. Right, that's great. So tell us who, uh, who really is eligible for this type of assistance? We have several different programs and we do have um, majority of our customers, I can tell you, Tom, uh, surprisingly, many times they don't know they are eligible for assistance. Right. Some customer called us and they said, I didn't know about this. Right. And that's exactly our mission, mm -hmm. you know, to inform customers that they can be eligible for different programs that they have. Mm. As long as they have an account with us under their names, they are a customer of New Jersey Natural Gas. Um, let me tell you also, we encourage customers to apply also with their electric bills. Right, right. Even though we, you know, uh, sure. promote through the gas company, we know that gas and electricity go hand in hand. Which is great. Many times customers are, are behind in the gas. Also, we understand they could be, they may be also behind in the electricity. Right. So when they come to us, we provided the information for both utilities. Mm -hmm. And many times water as well. Yes, you know, okay. We try to guide our customers to any uh, resources that we do have. And we always tell them, call us as soon as you have a financial hardship. Right. Don't wait to have a disconnection notice to the services are disconnected already. Right. Our mission is to prevent our customers from mm -hmm. getting the service interrupted. Right. That's really what we want. Right. New Jersey Natural Gas, we want to have every customer comfortable in their homes especially now in mm -hmm. the winter. Yes. The temperature is gonna start going down mm -hmm. as we speak. Right, right. And we, we really want there to be f comfortable in their homes. Right, which is, which is really important. I think a lot of our viewers, like many of our customers, just don't think they qualify. They think that you, you, you know, they make a little too much or whatever it is, and they'd be surprised on, on what, be they, very what surprised. they can really 
you know what they what kind of assistance they can get you know we're and it's nice that you help them not only with natural gas but also like you said the electric or water whatever it might be because you know we're just trying to help our customers in any way we can and that's that i think that's really helpful so what are the different programs that are actually available for folks to to help with their bills we have several different programs, okay? We do have uh, the LAHIP and the USF programs. Mm -hmm. These programs are based for limited income families. Right. Um, we do have the True page, and they're also under the New Jersey Shares program that have right. been out for years. And these are for a little more higher income mm -hmm. families. Some programs is based on income. Some programs are based strictly in necessity. Right. We are very proud that New Jersey Natural Gas, our very own Give the Warmth program, yes. that help families with their past due balance. Mm -hmm. So when a customer combines all of these programs, because in many occasions, a customer can have more than one. Right. So, uh, you know, we combine many different um, information, resources, different programs that they can have. So really alleviate the financial hardship that they can be involved right. at any point. Right. I think it's wonderful, and you know, having been with the company a long time, the Gift of Warmth program, it always amazes Fantastic. me that we're the only utility in the state that has an additional program, you know, and we go through our customers and our shareholders and our employees to raise those funds, and I know it's a couple hundred thousand a year that we can raise to give back to our customers, which is, which is nice. Um, and I know a lot of people appreciate that because it fills in a lot of cracks, right? Like, so somebody may have a higher income, but might have, you know, might have had a medical condition that threw them off track financially for a while. And we can actually help fill in that gap, which is, I think, a nice thing to be able to do because we have a little more control over that. Yes, right? definitely. We many times inform that to customers. Just contact us. Don't right. be shy saying, well, I, you know, I'm working. I probably don't qualify for programs. Um, we have programs that a family of four can have earnings up to $109,000 a year. $109,000 a year. $109,000 a year and still qualify for a program. Wow. Because, you know, we understand how the cost of living is high. If sure. all you need is an illness in the family, you know, God forbid, your car break down, stuff mm -hmm. like that, immediately your paycheck has to go to different resources right. other than right. just pay your, your energy bills. Right. At this point, this program will assist the customers. Right. And they give the one program we always can be, since it's our own program, we can always be a little more flexible right. with that program. Right. And we have a lot of customers that rely mm -hmm. on these programs and constantly call us. And you know, we have many notes, many thank you notes that they do really appreciate. Yes. Our you know, our programs that we do have, especially Give the Warm programs, you know, the True and Page program that we have. This is through all our service territory we're talking about. It's not only for Mammoth County. Right. We have this Mammoth program Ocean. for Mammoth and Ocean mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. Our service territory extends also up to Morris County. Mm -hmm. We have uh, some uh, households in Middlesex County. Mm -hmm. So we help and we assist every customer in our service territory. Right. We have right now for the winter months, we have and our office in Asbury Park, we're going to have a representative from the agencies actually speaking to customers. They're going to be there every Friday to help customers directly and to have a conversation with them, not only on how to save energy, which is very important, how do you save energy and money, but how to apply actually for the program and get the benefit. That's great. The benefit comes in different forms. When a customer applies through us, Right. They can have monthly benefits, depend how low the income will be, how limited the income will be, mm -hmm. or they can have a one-time benefit as well. Right. It's a program that also have a medical necessity for the cooling. And like I said before, we, all, we encourage the clients to apply for as well as electric, not only right. for gas. We always tell them, bring your documentation for an electric too, because we help you with that. Right. That's great. It's really wonderful, and, and you know, I know that there's a lot of folks out there that need that assistance, and it's not people just taking advantage of a system at all. It's people that really have that need, and it's great to be in a position to give them the information to really get them the help that they need, to get them through a tough winter. You know, we all have families or, you know, know people that have kids or, or adults in the family or seniors, and a lot of issues come out in, in daily lives for all of us. And you know, when you need that helping hand, it's nice to be able to turn to somebody and get that help. 
but again, I know it's a, it's always a matter of stressing that you know folks have to ask for the help. You know, we we try, and I know we do a lot of reaching reaching out to folks yes. to let them know about the programs. But when it really comes down to it, it's not a time to be shy or not not a time to be proud. It's a time to you know, call and get the help you need because you get back up on your feet. And when you're back up on your feet, then you can give back to the community some other way. Right. Exactly. You know, we have so. many customers that have done that over yes, the years when know, they, you know, yeah. they come back a few months later and they say, hey, you helped me out when I needed it. Mm -hmm. Now I want to help somebody else. Right. This is fantastic. This is the best day that we have when we have somebody that actually let us know how much help we mm -hmm. were to them yeah. and how they want to extend the help to, other, to others. Yeah, that's great. So. I know we're talking about, you know, informing folks, and this is certainly one way, but how can folks find out about all the different programs that are actually available from the gas company? Yes, we want them to call us. They can call us directly right. to our number, 1-800-221-0051. Mm -hmm. um, I have my personal email address. They can always email me, energyassist at njng.com. Okay. Our website has a lot of important information, but they can get the information njng.com, the New Jersey Natural Gas website. They stop by to any of our locations. Right. They will have, you know, representatives to help them, and sometimes in different languages as well, which we are very proud of that. Yes. And it's, it's just a matter of the customer mm. reaching out for assistance. Right. It's a lot of help out there. We want to help them to get the assistance they need. Our goal is to keep every customer comfortable in their home, right. and we need the customer to help us to right. do that. Right. If right. they don't let us know, we don't know it's a they need street. it. Right. It's a definitely two-way street. The last thing street. we want to do is is shut somebody off. Uh, definitely, we, we do really not don't want, want to, to do, do that. that. So, and and that's really the that's usually the difference is the folks that call. And again, a lot of times it takes a lot of reminders from us or what have you. But if they would call right away as soon as they're having an issue, we could probably help them a lot sooner and take a lot of stress off, off their backs, really, in, in the end, to, to help them, right? Yes, definitely. We always stress the customers call us as soon as you think you will not be making the next payment. Right. That way we prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. We will work as much as we can to prevent, to you know, interrupt the service at any time. Right. We do not want to do that. Right. Definitely right. not. Right. And uh, any, any words of wisdom for folks as they, you know, when you're in the heat, in the actual winter season and all that, what types of things should they be also looking to do, like weatherization type things and all that sort of yes, stuff? Yes, right? we do have a lot of weatherization programs. We have the Comfort Partners program. It's actually for the limited income folks that they can come to their homes. See exactly where are their energy going. Sometimes they have, you know, bad windows that they can fix or replace in many right. cases. Um, we also have free tips that people can use in their homes. Um, I was going through the other day as we change it over the seasons are changing now for the winter season. And it's a few that I even, you know, apply to my own home. Um, you know, it's very interesting to see how little things can help you right. to save money and save right. energy. That's, yeah. you know, the main goal that's what we wanted to do, to right. save energy for the future generations. Yeah. So there's so many things that we can do. For example, I saw one that I was like, I'm definitely doing this. And they were saying that if you open the windows with your south facing windows in your home. Yes, that will help bring the sun in. It will help you. The that. sun comes in. It's just like a given. But you don't think about these right. things. Right. Sometimes somebody else has to tell you to right, do sure. it. You know, and then you put it in your routine. Every morning you open it at night when you get home, yeah. you close it. So, right. you know, the draft don't come in. It's perfect. A thermostat, if you have, you know, uh, a programmable thermostat, make so sure you can it, make right? sure you're using it. As and supposed speaking to of be. thermostat and keeping the, everything in time, we're actually running out of time. Okay. For this wonderful interview, but it's, you're a wealth of information. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you really you're coming to Community Connections to let us know all about the wonderful programs that New Jersey Natural Gas has to offer. And uh, again, great uh, work that you're doing. We appreciate it. And we appreciate our viewers, <clears throat> and we ask that you uh, please come back after this uh, commercial break. Thank you. Now's a great time to make your home more energy efficient, and the New Jersey Natural Gas Safe Green Project is here to help. 
Take advantage of rebates and incentives up to $15,000 designed to make your whole house more comfortable, improve performance, and save you money. Upgrade your older inefficient heating equipment, central air conditioning system, and water heater with money-saving high-efficiency equipment. But don't stop there. Your new equipment will have to work harder, wasting energy dollars if your home is not properly weatherized by reducing air and duct leaks and installing proper insulation. Call the Save Green Project at 877-455-NJNG or visit SaveGreenProject.com and we'll help you get on the road to maximum energy efficiency and savings and explain how you may qualify for up to $15,000 in rebates and incentives. Call Save Green at 877-455-NJNG. Welcome back to Community Connections here at SCAN. Again, my name is Tom Hayes. I'm your host and appreciate you having you here to, to be with us. Uh, today I have uh, another special guest and that's Siobhan Connolly and she's the Vice President and Trust Officer at uh, Garden State Trust Company. So thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. This is great. Yeah, this is great. This is really, I know it's going to be very informative to not only all of our guests watching but also myself. This is, <laughs> this is important information. Oh, so, I hope so. Yeah, I think so. So what are some of the common mistakes or misconceptions people have about estate planning? Well, it's usually a downer, so people don't like to talk about it, um, mm -hmm. generally. But um, the biggest mistake is not planning at all. Right. And, you know, a lot of people are under the impression, well, I know it's all going to my wife or it's all going to my kids, so what do I need an estate plan for? And unfortunately, um, it's not as easy as all that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, uh, if you don't have a will or the proper documents in place, um, probate can be very oppressive. So in Jersey, they make it very easy. If you do have a will, um, you basically only have to see the surrogate once. You just take the will down, you probate the will, and they pay a small fee, and it's over. Um, mm. So that misconception about the, oh, probate is um, kind of overblown in some ways. Okay. So if you have a will and you have it in place, then you know that takes that out of it. Um, the other is not speaking to your family or your loved ones, um, your wife, about what you want mm -hmm. and how you want things to be. Um, and it's a tough conversation. It's a conversation that, you know, people avoid at, at all costs. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes that conversation actually never pl takes place. And when, you know, um, you pass on, nobody knows exactly what you wanted or they're not really familiar with your estate. And, right. It's um, unsettling it becomes, for your family it, yeah, members left behind. Yeah, it becomes difficult. Um, so you want to make sure that you have that tough conversation, at least with your wife, mm -hmm. um, and especially with your um, executor or anybody that you're going to put in place of, if you have a power of attorney. You want to let them know. <laughs> right, right. So that, you know, that doesn't come as a shock to them and that they're willing to serve in that capacity. So if you're like a husband and wife and you mm -hmm. want to do a will together, like there's always a thought that, well, one of you passes away, what if you both pass away at the same time or one shortly thereafter and mm -hmm. who goes first, all those kinds of things. So you're, I would imagine you really want to think that all out, right? Yes. To kind of just have all, uh, all bases covered, so to speak, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And you can cover that in your will. You can, we don't usually recommend that people do a joint will. It's, it's just not, a, it doesn't work very well, we find. Uh, so uh -huh. you would want to have a separate will for yourself and for your spouse. Okay. Um, you know, you don't go together very often, and so it's much easier if one will can be probated at the appropriate time, and then the other will stands on its own. Interesting. So it makes, uh, it makes a lot more sense to actually do separate wills. So an individual will, so let's say in a husband and wife situation, a husband has a will that says, um, if I pass, then I would like the, you know, my, the estate to go to my wife. Mm -hmm. And it must also say probably something that in the event that she's, already passed or whatever, right. the next would be Absolutely. the children or something like that Absolutely. or whatever. So you can kind of spell it all down. I almost kind of cover any different situation that could come up. So then Absolutely. you kind of have it done at one time and not have to keep revisiting it and try to... Well, it's interesting you say that because it is something you really should revisit. revisit at um, certain times. Absolutely. And I especially mean, if you've got it in set and, you, and something happens and you're still good, but you should be checking it just... Yes. Right. Okay. Um, Various reasons. One, um, your spouse predeceases you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then your spouse. It's a lot easier going forward if you, um, you know, redo your will to leave it to your children rather than just let it go. Because what will happen is the children will have to search for the death certificate of your spouse and um, go to the probate court with that information as well as you know just probating your will. So mm -hmm. it gets a little. There's a little stickiness to that. So 
It's actually really important. Uh, we have a rule of thumb that it's, I would say, at least every three years, go okay. take it out, look it over. If you have a family crisis or something that happens that changes things, divorce, mm -hmm. your children get divorced. Mm -hmm. um, if the cho person you chose to be your executor is no longer capable of serving, you want to think of that. Also, so you do want to have alternate beneficiaries, obviously, but you also really want to have um, alternate executor as well. Mm -hmm. written into the document. It makes things a lot easier. But you also want to consider um, that, you know, if there is, if you move too, if your will is, you know, you change your domicile where you live, then you want to make sure that your will is in accordance with the laws of that state. So you may want to review it at that point uh, too. Okay, that's a good point. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't think most people, including myself, would realize that that would change mm -hmm. based on a, moving to a different state. It could, it could. <clears throat> Gotcha. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So now, what is a letter of instruction, with, you know, regards to a will? And, and a letter of instruction is something that uh, we really recommend in our business too, um, in addition to a will. And you can have in your will, you can state that there, I may have executed a letter of instruction that um, gives away certain parts, certain parts of my estate, or gives away certain things of my personal um, property. Um, but it also, a letter of instruction is great for your family or for whoever your executor is going to be because you can tell them where everything is. Mm, People okay. forget how important that oh, is. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Where, is, where are the title to the house? Where yeah. is the original documents? Right. Where are, um, where are my assets? Mm -hmm. You know, do you have a Merrill Lynch account? Where, where are the statements? You know, like... Let everybody know where those items are so that they're not tearing apart your house. Right, right. And missing things. And saving them a lot of, you know, turmoil and, and, yeah, turmoil and aggravation. Grief you know? and top of everything Title to else, the car. Right? Yeah, you know, right, is it, right. it, it, are, Do you have a file cabinet with everything? Let everybody know. It just makes things so much easier in that time of grief that mm -hmm. they're not struggling to figure out, you know, I don't know if dad had, you know, an investment account in New York City, or did he have an investment planner? So those are the things you want to make sure you let everybody in on. Right, right. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, there's a lot, again, a lot of moving parts to that whole yeah. process, right? Absolutely. So what needs to be included in your, in your will? Like, what are some of the main things? You mentioned some things already, right? But other Right, other you want to um, make sure that, obviously, if you do have a letter of intent, you know, even if you don't do the letter of intent, they'll include that if there's no letter of intent found, just go by my will. So it's not like... You, they have to scramble to look for the letter of intent. Make sure that's easy, easily found somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, also, you want to include, um, like I said, an alternate executor. Don't just put one executor in. Um, somebody who could serve if your wife or your child can't. Um, also, um, the distrib distribution of your assets, obviously. Mm -hmm. if people think that generally you know, it, it should be equitable. If you have three children, you want to divide your estate three, three ways. What you really need to do is do a little soul searching because everybody's family situation is different. Right. So you want to think about that for a second. Right. What if um, one of your child has special needs? What if one of your ch children over the course of their lifetime have had um, addiction problems or financial problems? Do you really want to leave your estate completely outright to them? Do you want to maybe put it in trust? and then preserve those assets to make sure that, you know, they'll be there for the future, for them in retirement, for their children. It's just a, a way to really kind of look it over and right. make sure that, what if you have a child that's also uh, done very well for themselves and one that has not? Right. Do you, you know, there are, there are different things that sometimes when you go into the attorney, you don't think to ask, mm -hmm. and they may not think to ask you. So you gotcha. just want to be careful. You just want to be careful about that and for think sure. it through. And what are the essential documents to have? Everybody should have a will. Okay. A and will. a POA. A lot of times people forget about the power of attorney. Okay. The power of attorney is really important because they don't, comp they don't think about their incapacity. They, when they think estate planning, they think, you know, after death. But really estate planning is also for the end of your life. Mm -hmm. And for before that, if you become sick or ill and don't, are unable or do not want to um, handle your finances anymore. Right. Make sure there's somebody in place to do that for you, mm -hmm. and someone you trust. That's right. a that's a big job too. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. And you don't want to end up with a um, 
you know, a legal guardian that's appointed by the court because that is the, right. the worst that's situation. Probably for not anybody. the person that you were originally thinking about, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, what is included in your estate for tax purposes? Everything. Okay. <laughs> that's another mistake that people make. They think, well, if I have insurance, it's not part of my estate. Well, actually, it is. Okay. Um, it's not taxed to your um, to your beneficiaries, but it is taxed in your estate. Um, so you. That's not true. Um, transfer on death, like if you have um, bank accounts or investment accounts that you um, transfer to a particular person, a beneficiary, your wife, your children, those things still are included in your estate for okay. tax purposes. Gotcha. They don't flow through your estate. They don't go through probate, but they are um, taxed. Yes. Government wants their fair share. Yes. And speaking of that, I know there's a lot of folks that question and like to know how do you how do you avoid some of those estate taxes or lower them or protect, I guess. Well, interesting enough, um, everybody knows about the new gas tax. Yes. Well, part of the, that part of that um, gas tax agreement to uh, implement that was to get rid of the estate tax in New mm. Jersey, which was six seventy five, which People very quickly hit, surprisingly, if you have, own a home. Right. So, um, in beginning in 2017, the New Jersey estate tax rises to um, two million dollars, and after that, in 2018, it actually goes away. Wow. Okay. So it is one of those things that will no longer be um, a problem for most people in New the Jersey. The burden for New Jersey, yeah, because right. that was always a bad, that was always it, a it problem, is. right? People it was the, said it was expensive to die in New Jersey. Yes, right? and that's why, and it's funny because we have a lot of senior population here with, yes. um, with the Jersey Shore, but mm -hmm. um, a lot of, we were losing a lot of that population to, right. to, the, to Florida and other places, but um, that should change things that's considerably. Good. That's positive. Um, on the federal side, it's $5.4 million, which we know that that's the exclusion before you get hit with any kind of taxes. And wow. so we know that I most just, of us won't I have just that under that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, if you're married, it's 10.9. Oh, thank goodness. Because okay. you get to port over whatever you don't Good. Use. I'll just make sure I stay married. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't wish worry. That, I wish that was an issue that I had to worry about the tax <laughs> know, at that level, right? Well, all of us. Unfortunately, in New Jersey, the inheritance tax has not changed, and that won't change. Um, that is, if you're leaving um, uh, any of your estate to, um, to people other than your spouse and children, um, they will be taxed. Okay. So gotcha. it goes, it depends on how far out from your lineal descendancy that goes. So gotcha. to your brothers and sisters, it would be at least 11%. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, you have to go over a certain amount. A certain for amount for that. Okay. Um, what is a revocable trust? A revocable trust is a trust that you create during your lifetime that you can take away. But the whole purpose of a revocable trust, while it was very important in tax planning or it may not be as important anymore, is to protect your assets if you become incapable of taking care of your finances. Okay, good. Um, it really protects you because you can have your trustee um, is a fiduciary, and mm -hmm. that means that utmost in their mind is loyalty to you. Right. So they can work in conjunction with your POA, but is separate from your POA, so that there are some stop gaps there yeah, to protect to you sure, sure. Um, from you know any kind of abuse. Um, and that's where Garden State Trust Company kind of comes in. Help we out can with that. yes, we can act as a corporate executor. So if like um, is true here and in, in all over the United States at this point. Children don't live close by. Yeah, so it's hard. Yeah, and they now live listen, we're, we're down to like a, a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. But what is the best way for somebody to get a hold of, of you at the Garden State Trust? Company? Um, you can reach us at seven three two two five 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 thousand, and we're also on the web um, www.gstrustco.com. And our website is unusual; it's very packed with a lot of information. Gotcha. So you can learn a lot about what we talked about today here on our website. Very good, and I think we all did learn a lot. So I thank you very <laughs> much so. thank uh, you. for all your information, <laughs> thank and I you. thank you, our viewers, for watching Community Connections here at Scan. Take care. <laughs>